Hi everyone, I am Johan Schgoff and I'm going to talk to you about BMC, which is an in-kernel cache designed to transparently improve the performance of a memcached server. Traditionally, web applications rely on databases to store the data they need on disks. However, disks are slow, which makes database accesses expensive. As the load increases, they can become a bottleneck, which further increases the processing time of client requests. To address this problem, Memcached uses main memory to cache data from traditional databases. Web applications can then use Memcached to efficiently store or retrieve frequently accessed data using simple set and get requests. It is therefore important for a Memcached server to be able to handle a large volume of requests in order to remain relevant, useful, and not create a new button. However, Memcached's performance is limited by the Linux kernel because its network stack and socket API add too much overhead when receiving network packets. When Memcached receives requests over UDP, the socket can quickly become a bottleneck as the same data structure is shared between the Memcached threads and the kernel threads running the network stack. When we measure the throughput of requests processed by Memcached, we realize that uh, the UDP socket bottleneck has a negative impact on performance. As you can see in green in this graph, the throughput is even degraded when more than four threads are used. As this is, as this is a known problem, kernel contributors have added the, the SOE reuse port socket option to the Linux kernel. It allows the kernel to allocate several sockets sharing the same interface and port. We modified Memcached to use this option and allocate a number of sockets equal to the number of threads. We named this modified version Memcached SR. As you can see in blue in, on the graph, the simple modification allows the, to scale the throughput with the number of threads. Even though Memcached SR is able to press says uh, 1.25 million requests per second, we observe that uh, it is not enough to deal with high network load. This is because the incoming requests still have to go through the entire network stack because they are before they are received and re processed by the application. But the network stack had uh, too much uh, other overhead to process every packet received by the NIC hardware as a result, socket and hardware choose, fill up, and new packets uh, are dropped. The goal of BMC is to reduce this overhead for most of the in incoming requests. To avoid the execution of the kernel network stack, existing work usually employ kernel bypass technologies such as DPDK. But these have several disadvantages as they, as they usually prevent hardware resources from being shared and induce a high CPU consumption. BMC adopts a different approach that we call the press stack processing. It consists of processing part of the memcached traffic before the execution of the network stack. In our case, we target get requests over UDP because they represent a very large part of the memcached traffic. The advantage of this approach is that it does not require any modification of the application and it scales thanks to the mapping of network interrupts on different cores. BMC uses this per stack processing approach for Memcached with a proxy and a kernel cache. The proxy is responsible for filtering the received packets to process only Memcached requests. When a get on a data is received, the BMC cache is accessed. In case of a cache hit, the cache is used to answer the request instead of the application. Set requests in TCP are also filtered by BMC. However, we choose not to update the BMC cache with the set requests because it can cause cache coherence issues. First, BMC does not know the order in which set requests are processed by memcached threads, so updates on the same data can be performed in different orders between the two caches. And forcing the updates order is not simple without uh, a costly synchronization mechanism. Second, TCP flow control mechanism could reject new segments after the execution of BMC. 
In this case, the update is never performed in the MacHD cache, so it should not be done uh, in the BMC cache either. Instead, such requests are simply used by BMC to invalidate cache entries. When a GET is received and the BMC cache access results in a cache miss, the request is received by MacHD as usual. Then, in case, in case of a cache uh, hit in a MacHD, the application's reply is intercepted by BMC to update its uh, corresponding cache entry transponder. BMC is fully implemented on Linux using the BPF infrastructure. The BPF infrastructure and its bytecode enable the execution of a specialized program in the kernel when a particular event occurs. The use of eBPF has several advantages. First of all, it provides strong safety guarantees thanks to the static analysis made by Linux at the time of loading an eBPF program. Second, eBPF also makes it possible to reuse the existing uh, JIT compiler to compile the eBPF bytecode into native code and thus gain in performance. Finally, BMC can run as soon as uh, the network driver receives new packets by using the kernel's XDP hook. However, the static analysis of eBPF programs limits uh, the complexity of what can be executed in the kernel. In particular, the kernel limits its analysis to a certain number of instructions so that it is limited in time and memory. BMC deals with these limitations in uh, several ways. First, it limits the size of data it can store and process. Second, BMC uses a rolling hash function which allows a key hash value to be calculated while passing a packet, which greatly reduces program complexity. Finally, and what most important of all, BMC's logic is split into seven small eBPF programs. Each program is then optimized to pass the Linux kernel check and uses uh, data structures allocated on each CPU to pass uh, execution context information to another program. To evaluate BMC, we use three machines equipped with 40 gigabits network cards. The server runs memcached and BMC, and the other two run clients to generate traffic. The workload parameters represent BMC's target workload that is based on patterns observed in memcached deployments at Facebook and are also those commonly used in the MKD literature. We first evaluate the throughput of the server under three configurations, the Nilan MKD alone, MKD SR alone, and MKD SR with BMC. The corresponding figure shows how varying the number of cores used to run MKD threads and process interrupts affects throughput. We observed that using BMC improves throughput up to 18 times compared to vanilla MemcacheD and up to six times compared to MemcacheD SR alone. We also see that uh, throughput scales with the number of cores. We then change uh, the workload to use eight kilobytes uh, values instead of 32 bytes. This is BMC worst case workload as all BMC cache lookups results in a cache miss because the value is too large to fit in the cache. We compare the throughput of MemcacheDSR alone and MemcacheDSR with BMC, and the results show that uh, the additional processing of BMC does not deteriorate the, the application throughput. To further study the overhead induced by a BMC cache miss, we measure the total time required by the server to receive, process, and reply to a single GET request. The current figure show the latency distribution of 100,000 measurements. We observe that uh, the median latency of both MemcacheD cache hits and misses is about one microsecond lower when not running BMC. This shows that BMC has negligible uh, overhead compared to the total time required for the execution of the network uh, stack. We now compare MemcacheD SR with BMC against the MemcacheD implementation from CSTAR, a framework for building event-driven applications. CSTAR uses DPDK and the kernel bypass approach to build its own network stack in user space and avoid the overheads of the Linux network stack. 
We first evaluate the throughput of CSTAR and compare the results with the MKHD SR running with BMC while varying the number of cores. We observe that MKHD SR with BMC offers up to five times higher throughput than CSTAR. As our investigation showed that uh, CSTAR was not optimized to process the UDP protocol, we changed the workload to send GET requests using both TCP and UDP protocols. The results show that uh, both configurations scale with the number of cores up to until the TCP workload generation becomes uh, the bulk bottleneck. We see that BMC deals best with UDP requests when CSTAR offers better throughput than MKHD SR when receiving TCP requests. We then measure the CPU usage of, of both configurations for different client loads. In both configurations, we use a total of eight CPU cores to process the workload. For MKHD SR with BMC, the CPU usage is split between the application and the network stack, including BMC. The results show that uh, CSTAR uses 100% of its CPU resources, even when the load is low because of the power mode drivers used in uh, DPK. Uh, preserving the Linux uh, interrupt model allows the CPU usage of MKHD uh, with uh, BMC to scale with the load. At 2.5 million requests per second, we see that MKHD with BMC is able to process the same load than CSTAR while using three times less re CPU resources. To sum up, BMC implements an in-kernel cache to solve MKHD requests as soon as possible. Contrary to other approaches, BMC works without requiring any modification to the Linux kernel or to the MKHD application. Moreover, it runs on the commodity hardware, which makes it e easy to deploy on existing systems. It offers significant throughput improvements while introducing negligible overrun. We are currently working on an optimized eviction algorithm as an ongoing work. The difficulty in implementing such algorithm is that the hotness information is dispatched between the BNC cache and, and the MEM caches. And uh, both caches have uh, partial information. Thank you for uh, your attention. You are free to take a look at the paper and contact us at this email address for uh, more information.